Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. Councillor in Nizahana's constituency, not surprised at her decision to leave representational politics. Council of the Beatrice Town Division in Lisa's Hanna South East St. Anne constituency, Ian Bell, is he's not surprised that she's stepping away from representational politics. Councillor Bell believes Miss Hanna's performance did not inspire confidence. Based on, the, based on the result of the general election of September 3rd, 2020, um, I know that the, the writing was on the wall. So it was only when, it's not if, but yeah. when. Well, based on the result of the election, the seat was won by 31 or 32, somewhere thereabout. And that had never, ever happened in the history of South East St. Anne. Even the election before, it was won in the hundreds. It is very clear that something is wrong. So what had happened, well, it would not only be South East St. Anne that uh, the PMP would have stayed home. But a uh, constituency like South East St. Anne has never, ever have that um, regardless of how the, the waves were blowing. We wouldn't have um, a 32 win in South East St. Anne. So the writing was on the wall that um, the people of South East St. Anne had spoken. And they have indicated that um, the MP was in the departure line because things was just not going in the right direction as to what the people of South East St. Anne would have deserved. And um, it would become a very harder challenge for her to win after I step from that executive headed by her. Mm -hmm. Because um, the people in South East St. Anne will tell you that I work my shirt off on election day. And at the end of it, we, would, we were only able to pull through with a mere 32. Political commentator Dr. Nadine Spence believes Ms. Honor's signal of departure is a further political attack on PNP President Mark Golden. It could be one of, one of two things. Exactly what the councillor just spoke to. Ms. Hannah recognizes that her candidacy is not a viable candidacy coming going into the next re uh, election. She also recognizes that her party's chance of winning the next election might not be good looking in going into 2023 and so on. Um, but I think she also, I, I wondered as well if she was also putting forward another challenge for leadership in, in this roundabout kind of way. Because certainly, Cliff, this is not going to mean anything good from, from our Golding leadership of the PNP. Certainly, um, this is a, 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 almost like a nail in the coffin of his leadership. Given the fact that speech that she would be indicating that she doesn't think the, the, the PNP has a viable chance of winning the next election. She, she is also ensuring that she jumps the ship before election day. So I think in any case, it's an attack on the leadership of Mark Golding. But I think it, it's one of two things. She's either challenging now through her resignation. It's going to take a lot of conversation to, to, to get the party back together again. If you do a second reading, mm -hmm. you recognize that this is a, a challenge to Mark Golding's leadership. And essentially, Lisa Hannah saying, you haven't done the things that you needed to do to get the party to the next level. Hannah's resignation surprising, but for PNPC's analysts. Political analysts are surprised by Lisa Hannah's decision to quit representational politics and believe it does not agree well for the opposition People's National Party, PNP. Anna handed in her resignation letter to opposition leader Mark Golden, explaining that she will not make herself available to run in the next general election. Analysis Kenyatta Powell argued that Hannah's surprise resignation is indicating that something is not quite well in the PNP. I think what her resignation indicates is more to remark in the People's National Party. Yes, she lost leadership challenge, but she is still a sort of frontline leader within the People's National Party, and you don't have a frontline leader just resigning out of the blue just so, if everything is fine, Powell charged. It's surprising especially, since there were no indications at all. She gave no hint that she was about to resign, or even if that was a contemplation. Fellow analysts Kevin O'Brien Chang agreed with Powell that Hannah's resignation has highlighted the frustration within the People's National Party. She is probably frustrated with the PNP, the lack of unity and the lack of common sense. If you are a part of the PNP, you must be disappointed with the direction of the party. It's just a lack of common sense. You're not seeing it, 
and you'll get frustrated eventually, he told reporters. Hoping Hannah would return, Chang said the resignation is also not good for Jamaica. We need people who are interested in the country, and whatever her flaws, she has shown good interest in our country. Many people in her situation just want to go party and live life and all that. Over her criticism, she has been a patriot, and there are not many patriots around. Maybe she will come back one day, he added. Meanwhile, Dr. Paul Ashley said people demand answers from the PNP. This cannot be a good thing for the opposition leader. I think the public will demand that some clarity is given to this decision. I think the People's National Party General Conference is scheduled for September next month, and to quit now, it's very strange, very strange. I think the opposition leader will have to give some clarity to the situation, or Lisa Hanna herself. It is something that is critical. Why no? What has happened? He asked. Ashley believes something critical must have happened for Lisa to leave. She was writing in the Jamaica Observer on a weekly basis, dealing with international relations and foreign affairs in particular. It comes as somewhat of a surprise that she has quit representational politics, he added. As Zozo will help us play again. Residents of Rose Garden in Kingston Central, popularly referred to as spoilers, pleaded to Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Tuesday to extend the zone of special operations Zozo in another section of the constituency to include their community. Holness was to the community where a massive fire ravaged multiple adjoined premises on James Street and Smith Lane Monday morning, leaving over 30 people, including children, homeless. It is widely well believed among residents that the fire was set just after 4 a.m. by gunmen, who then opened fire on them, trying to escape the blaze. The police have, however, said they have no such evidence of gunfire or arsony, but will continue to investigate. The residents told Holness that due to constant violence in the community, stemming from an ongoing gang feud, it has been a long time since they last had the luxury of playing sport or hosting entertainment events. A young man jealously pointed to the Parade Gardens, another community in Kingston Central, which was declared a Zozo by Prime Minister Andrew Holness in January. He said since the Zozo was established, they have been enjoying regular sporting activities. I am an ex-footballer. I used to play for the Central Kingston Football Club as a defender. I used to play on the same street. I used to play ball on Bissell Street, Wildman Street, Rum Lane, and I used to go everywhere in Central Kingston go play ball. I can't even tell you when last a ball rolled around here, but down in the communities where the Zozo is, I understand that football play regular, on a Sunday, me want peace so me can play some ball, the male resident stated. He further said he believes spoilers can return to the days when people are proud to call themselves residents of that community. I actually believe that the community can come back. I born and grow in Spoiler. I have been living here all my life. Growing up here, I see nice, the bitter, the sweet. Most definitely, I would love to see generations after me to come and actually see that this is a nice community to be a part of. We agree that crime is something that cannot be stopped by just one thing, but I believe the Zozo can be a start in Rose Gardens. As the Prime Minister listened to the complaints of the residents, there were chants from a few women of We Want Zozo. One clearly frustrated woman told Honest that the violence has caused her to be traumatized. You know how long me no walk on Wellman Street and me live a spoiler? Me can't get figure in a day round robbing them again and me can't make no money. The teenagers are afraid to walk. One time violence used to go on, but we could go anywhere. No, we can't go anywhere. No, we can't go anywhere. We are fear hitch up in the house. We can't work with that. The recommendation for the Zoza in Parade Gardens to be expanded to include Rose Garden has been a constant cry for many stakeholders, including People's National Party caretaker for Kingston Central constituency, Imani Duncan Price. Her most recent appeal came on Monday on the heels of the alleged firebombing. She bemoaned that the people have to run from the burning house, leaving their assets and important documents, such as passports, birth certificates, and car titles, behind just to save their lives. They are in such fear because they have been told that it's not over. It is time to expand the Zozo, including Spoiler, where was one hot last year to protect people's lives and property. These are hardworking Jamaicans who have lost everything, she said. As he stood facing the people who were burnt out on Monday, the Prime Minister said he would consider expanding the Zozo, but made it clear that resources were limited. We'll be taking a second look at the Zone of Special Operations here to see how best we can expand it given the resources that are here. You will understand, however, the right across Jamaica, there are communities in conflict which are calling for the same thing 
and are competing for the resources. That is a challenge. There are many communities like this where conflict has become so intense that people just can't enjoy peace and the freedom of pre spring. We have put in security intervention and it is giving peace, but the challenge is if you move that security intervention, will the peace still exist? The Zoso is not a permanent answer. It is there to give space for peace to emerge, for our community leaders to emerge, for our wardens of the peace and the environment, and people will ensure that people are going to school for our community to re emerge. An option proposed by Wholeness was to start by redeveloping the entire block that was burnt out on Monday and eventually expanding the redevelopment to other sections of the community. What we want to do is to take this entire block and redevelop it so that people can have better quality of housing and maybe that will change their outlook and perspective. That is what we are going to do here. We have already mobilized the social housing program to look at the entirety of the area to see how we can develop it. Whatever immediate social intervention we can give to help the people with food and clothing, we will help. Definitely, we will help with back to school for the kids who are displaced. Please remember to subscribe, like, share.